Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry at Romano Scientific in New York and the creator of the Dr. Destroyer book. I'd like to go over with you today a really great question in biology and you're going to learn a lot of new concepts. So let's have a look. I want to discuss decomposers with you. These are organisms that obtain their nutrients and energy by breaking down dead organic matter called detritus, unlocking carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and many other elements using enzymes. Without decomposers, the world we know wouldn't even exist. So this is extremely important to have these organisms that can break down the dead organic compounds. Now, or dead organic matter, I should say, sorry. We can classify decomposers as heterotrophs. Now, these are organisms requiring organic compounds for energy or for carbon source. Decomposers are mainly fungi and bacteria. These are the engines of decomposition. That is a guaranteed question that you will see on an exam. So the two main types of decomposers would be fungi and bacteria. Don't forget, fungi are eukaryotic, where bacteria are prokaryotic. Now, a very similar term that many teachers interchangeably use is called a detritivore. Now, you gotta be a little careful on this. So remember, a decomposer obtains their nutrients by breaking down dead organic matter. The, de the detritivores eat the remains. They don't just break it down, they eat the remains of dead plants and animals and carry out internal digestion where the decomposers don't eat it. Some examples of detritivores include slugs, dung flies, that sounds yummy, huh? Millipedes, wood lice, earthworms. So these are some examples of things that are detritivores. Like I said, bacteria and fungi would be the decomposers, where these organisms will eat the remains and be the detritivores. Now, just a split a very small hair, bacteria usually decompose low molecular weight compounds, as well as polysaccharides, where fungi usually decompose higher weight molecular compounds and lignin. Now, you might be sitting there saying, what the hell is lignin? Well, if you remember the plant cell wall, usually when you hear the plant cell wall, a sure bet question is what makes up the plant cell wall, and that's cellulose. Cellulose is the main component, and it happens to be the most abundant polymer on Earth. If you remember, cellulose is a whole string of beta-D-glucose molecules hooked in a 1,4 linkage. So the plant cell wall is mainly cellulose, but not only cellulose. It, can, it also is made of what we call hemicellulose. Why the hell they call it hemicellulose, I have no clue. It's ridiculous. It has nothing to do structurally with cellulose. Hemicellulose um, includes many types of sugars. For example, xylose, which is the main, usually the main sugar in hemicellulose. Also arabinose, you might also have glucose mixed in. Cellulose is only glucose. So hemicellulose is sort of a mixture. It includes five carbon sugars, like I said, of xylose and arabinose. Um, and not structurally related to cellulose. Another component of plant, plant cell walls is lignin. This is a dangerous question that I'm gonna have in next year's Destroyer book. Lignin is the non-polysaccharide component. It's the glue that helps keep the cell wall together and stable. And lignin happens to be the second most abundant natural polymer on Earth. And it also gives wood the hardness, what is pretty hard. You get hit over the head with a bat, I think you would agree with me. Be careful on this. You might say, well, I thought cellulose gives the hardest hardness. That's wrong. I'll give you an example. How about a tissue that you'll wipe your face with? Is it hard or soft? It's soft, so it's cellulose. But lignin is what gives the hardness. All right, I hope this helps on an area where a lot of students are really confused. Um, in the future, I'll be doing some biochemistry clips as well. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.